Scott. Oh, you're killing me. <coughs> killing me softly with this song. We might be alive. Shut up. Hey, Scott. Hey, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Hey, nice sign. Oh, 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 I didn't know you noticed. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. I know, because you hooked me up. I hooked you up. It's pretty oh, fun I, stuff, huh? It might have been Erin, so I want to give a shout out to Erin. Is that okay? Yeah, she's the one that hooked, hooked us up. She hooked us up with that, and she, she got us some stemware, glassware. It's kind of exciting. Is, is oh, the, and look, she got us these. Okay, Clark Kent. Yes. All right. The, uh, oh. the community, rest assured community, these will be given away in the future. That's right. That's so that's right. kind of exciting. So Mike, uh, how's it going? It's good. I, I, yes, I wear glasses now. Well, you know it what? has started to fail me. And I'll join you. All right, Clark. <laughs> Who's here from last week? How many people saw our uh, our our uh, show last week? The uh, the Halloween the, ha the Halloween show? Yeah, I don't know. We we had a few hundred views, four hundred, five hundred, something like that. I thought it was pretty epic myself. Yeah, it was a pretty good show. We had uh, Eric Peterson on. We had Kevin Waymeyer on. Eric Peterson was the heat. He was the goat in that costume. Yeah, he was. He was pretty good. He was awesome. So, uh, Mike, who are we and why are we here uh, dressed goofy? That's right, because every week probably have a few new people that join us on this. So we're the Land Geek guys. The, uh, we live by the model that uh, everybody that uh, we have in our community, right? We take our businesses serious, ourselves not so much, right? We come on here. It's 1030 on the East Coast right now, 1034. So we have a little cocktail. We talk about land investing. Uh, we've done a lot of interviews. We've had some really, uh, we've had everybody on this show, right? This is awesome. And um, we're just here to talk about land investing and try to assist those who are burning the midnight oil. Is that how you say it, Scott? Bur burning the midnight oil, yes. Yeah, I like that. That's right. You've, you've said that many times and I uh, believe them. Believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's fun to do this. It's fun to uh, interact with the community. We have some people watching, uh, and it's fun to answer questions in real time. And uh, it's fun to have a drink or two. So that's why we do this. Absolutely. So excuse every me. Week we bring a little topic, right? Something that's relevant, real, real. That's Scott and I have been talking about this a lot, right? Real and relevant is two words we love. Yes. Uh, it's good to remain relevant and real and real in, in all aspects of life, not just land investing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Scott, so tell that, me, that was profound. I'm new to this business per se, right? Some that's new to the business and I'm wondering, is this market saturated? I mean, you guys have been teaching people for a few years now. And I'm worried that I'm just going to come to a market that's saturated. Am, is that a valid concern? Uh, well, I tell you what, I think it's a very common concern. And I can speak from experience because three years ago, when I went to boot camp for the first time, and Mark Podolsky gave us t shirts that said Land Geek Boot Camp on them. And uh, Aaron, my wife, got an extra four t-shirts for our four boys because Mark had a bunch left over. I did not want to wear my t-shirt anywhere because I was afraid that if I was broadcasting that I went to Land Geek Boot Camp, people would be like, what's that all about? Well, I'm, I want to get into land investing and I want to buy land. And I was like, 
I'm pretty sure I told my kid not to wear the t-shirt to school. <laughs> Which is pretty, what a controlling father. No, no. <laughs> for your best. But, but, but I think that's the fear of a lot of people getting into this, right? Right. Is that is that the amount of land out there is, is uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Mike? Finite. Limited, like- like Limited. This mark calls this the scarcity mentality, right? This is the scarcity mentality we're talking about here, as opposed to the abundance mentality. These are the two, right? Scarcity, abundance, and they're going like this. Which one's gonna win? Exactly, and, and as, you, as you go on in this business, you find that uh, you are less and less fearful that this is going to happen. And we just wanted to talk to the community tonight about this and give you some concrete examples as to how we know this to be the, the case. Um, so we have like four or five things we want to talk about uh, regarding this issue. And hopefully at the end of this episode, which will go viral, it always does. Uh, we're basically, uh, um, you know, we got about a million views on YouTube right now. So right. <laughs> so at the end of the show, when this goes viral, yes. all the land investors on Earth will feel at peace because there will be enough deals to be had for everyone, even Matt Forbes. Even Matt Forbes. Yeah. The refill expert. The refill expert. So. I'm going to, let's, let's move on to my, anything else? Would you like to? No, I think uh, you have the floor. I have the floor. Nice. So my first example of how this business uh, is, is still has a lot of potential. Okay. Is uh, in the last month I have done in the last two months, actually, I've done a ton of mailers. And I can't tell you how many people. It's got to be, got to be fifteen, maybe ten people have told me outright. Ten to fifteen people have told me outright. You know, this is strange. I've never ever gotten an offer for my property before. Uh, I'm I'm confused. Explain this to me. Why am I getting this type of offer? Right. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, this is really amazing because this is an county that land geek investors and land investors in general commonly work in. So that's the first data point. Now it's not necessarily concrete data uh, because it's spewing forth for me. It's subjective, but Mike, can you expand on that? I agree um, that, uh, you know, it's a common misconception that we are going to saturate this market, right? Uh, land, let's look at it reality-wise, right? Land investing is a very small niche. We have these boot camps four times per year, and we have about 70, sometimes 80 people that attend each one. That's across not just the country. That's across, across the world. We have a few international investors, right? So... If you were to go to a local real estate meeting from some people, you know, Scott and I are very fortunate. We talked to a lot of people that come to the business. Myself, I've never been involved in traditional real estate, but the people that are to tell us that a local meetup in their own town could have over a hundred, right? Never mind across the country. So first and foremost, recognize it's a small niche. You want to know if it's a small niche, go mention it to your one of your friends. Say, hey, I'm thinking about investing in raw land and watch them look at you cross-eyed like, what? That, that's crazy. What are you talking about? Right, right there. Then and there, I should show you that, you know, this is not a very common practice. Um, also, don't let that sway you from it. Here's the thing that we were talking about this in the round table the other day uh, is the fact that, you know, people are going to look at this and be like, what are you talking about? Right. So make sure you surround yourself with people that are actually doing the business on a routine basis. Look for the proof of concept to come from those who are succeeding in it, not from those who have never tried it, right? This is a, a real business model. I always say that there's a progression that people go to in our business. First and foremost, they hear about land investing and they, they have to realize that it's not some late night infomercial, right? It's not something that's just like some uh, pyramid scheme. It's a real model. Once you recognize and, and you grasp that, the next step is Okay, does it sing to me? And I mean that, right? Does it just because this model is incredible it doesn't mean it's going to sing to you? Do you see yourself 
getting involved in this. And if you do, the next step becomes, well, how do I do it? What's the quickest and best, most efficient way to get up and running? So, um, you know, it's, it's just, it, it's a micro niche. There's really uh, not a lot of people doing this, right? So there's no way we're going to saturate the market. When I first learned about this land investing from a friend of mine, Jeff, that was one of Mark's first students. And he was like, hey, you got to check out this land investing. I'm like, why is Mark teaching everybody? I don't get it. This is crazy. He's going to create all this competition. And he's like, no, no, come on, Mike. Look at all the realtors in our town. And look at them in our small town and look at how they're all doing so well. We're talking, there's no way that you can, right up front, no way you can saturate this market. And it's true, you can't saturate this market. Now, you can definitely limit yourself and take minor action because maybe you perceive this to be a saturated market. But it's not going to help you, right, Scott? You're going to be willing to take the massive action. And then, like you said, you'll stop mailing out offers and people will be like, I've never gotten one of these before. I, I, what is this all about? And I'd love to sell my land. How many people have told you that, Scott, that you've, uh, have you had anybody say, not only have I never gotten an awful letter, but uh, actually I really need to get rid of this headache. Yeah, I've had multiple people say to me recently, uh, this came at a perfect time. Uh, I'm, I'm getting up in light, up in age, and I have these properties here and elsewhere, and I don't know how to get rid of them. So I welcome your offer letter. I welcome your offer and let's do this. I had another lady today tell me that she was so excited to get my offer in the mail. She'd never gotten an offer before ever for her property because she wants to take a trip to Texas at the end of November and be able to stay uh, in a hotel when she goes there. She was planning on staying in her car. I felt so bad for her. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Jeez. So I know, right? She's like, yeah, I was planning on staying in my car, but now I may be able to stay in a hotel for the three nights I'm there. I'm like, that's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but glad to help. I'm going to have a hard time saying no to a counter offer from you. Um, but but no, we had a very nice conversation. So so that's a really cool thing uh, is that the, uh, the, you – your offer letter shows up in the inbox of people oftentimes at just the right time and they want to take advantage of it. Yeah. Let me explain this in case anybody out there hasn't grasped this yet. We're in the dream business. I know Mark spoke about this. Scott and I may have or probably have spoken about this on the past nightcaps. So picture this: somebody has bought this land years ago, right? They bought it for a reason in their mind. They pictured themselves RV and camping, tenting, going there, go hunting, whatever it may be. But as we all know, life takes over, right? Things happen to everyone and dreams go unrealized at times, whatever they may be. In these people's circumstances, the dream unrealized is the land was not utilized for what they had hoped and intended for. What happens next? Every year they get a little reminder that, you, hey, by the way, your dream that never was fulfilled, yeah, pay us some taxes on that, right? They get that every year, right? This uh, little reminder, this tax bill in the mail, and it just stings and reminds them of the fact that their dream was unrealized. And then comes along someone like Scott Boston, sends them out an awful letter, and it's like, hey, I'll take that pain away. And believe me, they are happy to be gone with that pain. And then what do we do? We find somebody who has a dream, an aspiration, a hope that they can go out RV, tent, camp, use it for hunting, now, will or will they not use that for that purpose? We do not know. But what we do know is we provide them the opportunity to do that, right, at a very affordable price. So we're right in the middle of two dreams. So we have happy people when we buy property from them and happy people when we sell property to them. I, I don't. It's fulfilling on both sides, Scott. How many times do you have people thank you on both sides of the equation? I love what you just said. You have like 10 of these a day. Do you know this? We are, we are right in the middle of two dreams. Seriously. I love it. It's true. It's very it really true. is. Uh, every once in a while, there's the hard sell, right? They're, they're, you get someone who they don't want to let their property go for that cheap, and you negotiate, and they may meet you in the middle. Um, but, but a lot, a lot of times, uh, it's, it's a fairly simple transaction. Uh, because we are there to solve a problem for these people who want to get rid of their land. So, and by the way, you don't always have to. T someone today I was talking to on the phone. They're like, about they want to get involved in land investing, and they're afraid to talk. To, not afraid, but they don't really look forward to having phone conversations. 
How many times, Scott Todd, have you? I'm mean, Scott Todd. Scott Bossman. Whoa, Brody oh, slip. Oh, that that was that hurt. No, come that on, really, Scott Todd. No, really, really that up. hurt. Come on, Scott Todd is gonna love that. He's gonna love that. You. That that may have been planned. Anyway, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh my God! How many times have you talked to somebody uh, on on the phone, right? And they actually were super excited to sell you their property. How many times? Many. Right. And and, and then you tell them two simple things. There there are two things you have to do in order for this to happen. You need to get a deed notarized, and you need to deposit money into your bank. Super simple. That's it. Super. And, and they're like, oh my gosh. You, how many times have you never had to talk to them on the phone? Only via oh. email? Oh, many, okay. So, I mean, I've, I don't, I can't count. I've sold via email. I've sold via Facebook Messenger. I've sold via text Bought without answer. ever talking to somebody. What's that? You've gone full cycle. I guarantee it several times. Bought and sold with no phone conversation. Yes. Which is so hard for someone to wrap their head around this new, this bit. Like, really? Like, when I first got involved, like, really? Like, this can happen. I don't have to talk to anybody and I can actually buy and then sell a property. That's the power of what, of what we're in today with the internet. I, yeah, exactly. You know what? I think at, at boot camp, Mark was actually surprised to hear that. Because, and, and I will note, I've noticed since I've been doing this three years, and you probably noticed this as well that I am on the phone less now than I was my first year in the business because people prefer to text. They prefer to message. They don't want to get on the phone. So I don't know. It's, it's crazy. So, so you need to match that with your customer. Who, if, you're, if you're purchasing or selling, you need to match their communication style. If they want to talk on the phone, great. If they want to email, great. If they want to text all day, great. That's just what we got to do. Yeah, I totally agree. And here's the thing: this is why, at a high level, uh, high level mailing, you need an intake man. <laughs> that cup is huge. I just watched you drink that; it just looks massive. It is a huge cup. What you you gave you gave it a couple of what's another name for it? Uh, you gave oh. it a, no. You said something else earlier in the show. Uh, you called it something different. I want to hear it again. Glassware? No, something else. Mug. No, it wasn't Stein. Was it Stein? What Stein? Did you no, I didn't call it a Stein, but... You had another name. We all come to you. I want to hear it again. I'm going to rewind this. Uh, Matt, can you rewind that, please? Matt's in the background. <laughs> He'll probably throw it up in the chat. <laughs> Where were you going with your most recent thought? What, what did I start with? Uh... <laughs> Here, I want to give another example of... Can I? Of uh, You can. The, the myth of scarcity. Yeah, because it's a myth. So, uh, well, not not an example of the myth of scarcity. I'm going to give an example of the reality of abundance. Here we go. Wow, I love that. You just flipped huh? that coin right over from heads to tails. I, I flipped it over. On, the, on last week's roundtable, and it was just published in the Facebook group this week, it was a really good roundtable. And we were talking about this to some degree, not, not quite in depth, but Scott Todd happened to mention uh, that, you know, he has data from LG Pass. Scott's been, Scott's been uh, working on LG Pass now for two, going on three years, and, or maybe two years. And he ran a report recently, uh, and he looked at the busiest county amongst land geek land investors, Okay. Uh, there are a couple of counties out there that I will admit and Mark will admit and Scott Todd would admit that are kind of getting nailed with offers. But you know what? He sat down and he's like, let's do, let, let's look at, let's look at the metrics on this. So what he did was he ran a report and in the last two years in the busiest county, there was not one parcel of land got, that got more than three offer letters. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Come on, why can't I be happy to listen to you talk? <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I not, mean, more, what? not more than one, not more than three offers to a parcel of land. 
in these counties that are getting hit heavily. You know what that means? Mail the counties. Yeah. It's all a numbers game. It's craziness. There might be fifth, there might be 25, there might be 50 people in a county in the land geek community. But if there's 5,000 vacant land parcels, that's 100 parcels each. I love your math. I always say there's three kinds of mathematicians those who can add and those who can't. Clearly, you are not the third. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> let, let me let me show you some other numbers. Can I? Yes, please. So, so, so Mark uh, talks about in his book Dirt Rich, and he also says in his passive income blueprint that uh, there's a there's a website out there, taxsalelist.com, that uh, states that they're now. I don't know. I'm a healthcare guy, and I'm a research guy, so I'd like to see the evidence. But let's just let's just say this is true. We know this to be true that there are 23 million parcels of land in the United States that are, that are uh, delinquent on taxes. 23 million. million 20, I really do this when you say million. 23 million <laughs> vacant land parcels in the United States. That's that a lot. Taxes. Mike, do you buy from people who are delinquent on taxes? Yes, I do. Do you buy from people who are not delinquent on taxes? All the time. We could probably double that number. Triple it. All right. So at the minimum. 23 million. Oh, look now, at that number. Let's just say there were 10,000. You're overestimating. Land investors. But that's a good thing. I'm sorry. Let's just say there were 2,000 land investors. Still I'm going to go with 2,000 first. Still overestimating, but let's, let's go. Let's just say it. there were 2,000 land investors in the United States that are that are working this business hard. Right. How, how many parcels of land per land investor is that, Mike? Uh, 11,500. Per land investor. And how much is that? They sold each one for $99 a month. Let's get, let's wait. I got one more number. One more number. Now let's now let's say there were ten thousand land investors in the United States working oh. this business hard. Which is no way near the number. We clearly know that. Twenty three hundred per person so per land investor. Two hundred thirty thousand dollars a month per investor. If a hundred dollars a month per deal, my math's right because I love math. Go get the land, dude. It's out there. Yeah, there's it's no out limit there for all of us. There's no limitation. There really is no limitation. There's no limitation. Uh, you know what? Did I just drop the mic? Oh, you just did drop the mic. I don't want to drop my mic because it's new and I love it, but you dropped the mic. <laughs> right. We got a question out there. Alex All right, what's the says, question? Uh, hey, guys, how do you deal with the people that want to meet over a small deal? I have a property about three hours away. And everyone that's interested wants to meet. I'd hate to drive six hours for a prospect. Okay, so I've never ever been to a land parcel that I purchased or sold. And um, there's really no need to go there. Well, it comes down to clear communications. Like, listen, we don't, we don't go to the land. We don't need to go to the land. Um, I would definitely find a way to convey that to them, Alex. Um, you know, the fact that here's the reality. Now, this is going to sound kind of, silly but it's the reality of it okay the first year i was involved with the land investing i made, we paid off our debt forty thousand dollars a lot of it was in uh arizona and i knew arizona was somewhere out there west i'm in boston i just didn't know quite where like i probably couldn't have pointed it on a map right it didn't matter to me i was just flipping it so not only do you have, you don't have to go to it you don't really have to know where it is either <laughs> oh my gosh that's hilarious. Now, Alex, I would tell you, we have had people in this community, including Scott Todd, who have met people in person. If it is convenient for you, three hours away, that's not bad. But I, what I would do is say to the guy, listen, bring cash, pay me, pay me $100, show me you're serious. I'll draw up the paperwork and meet me halfway. And, Across uh, the sky. That's from um, an arm Meet wrestling movie. Halfway. What year is that, Scott? Across an arm the sky. Wrestling movie. What's the name of it? And who's in it? Uh, Stallone is in it. That's right. With Dolly Parton. Name of the movie? 
with Dolly Parton. Correct. The name of the movie is Over the Top. Oh, man. Nice. And I'm going to say that that movie was from 1988. I think you are spot on. Really? Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking that's right there because I, I – that's awesome. Anyway, guys, Matt sorry. Forbes, side Matt side. Forbes says – oh, Matt Forbes. Dolly is not in it, and it's 1987. If it's oh. not Dolly, who is it, Matt? <laughs> I thought I thought Dolly Parton was in it. <laughs> All right, fine. I was close, though. I think that's the gambler. Okay. Oh, Barbara Thibodeau says she met her first seller in person. <clears throat> yeah, you know what? And that brings up a great point you said about putting money down because – Here's the thing. If somebody wants to buy a property from you, I, I don't drop documents. I don't do anything until there's some sort of payment made. Too many people have flaked out. Oh, I want to buy. I want to buy. You go, you get the documents ready. They back out. Take some sort of payment first, some sort of confirmation of their intent to buy. Totally. That's oh. awesome. Can we have a segment? I'm craving a segment. Yeah, let's do a segment. Wait a minute. Should we bring I got one. Should we bring a man on that segment? Or no? Let's let me do a segment first, and then we'll and then we'll bring him on. Okay. okay. So first segment we're gonna do. Boy, I'm getting a lot of handouts here. Is, by the way, by the way, somebody said I look like Clark Kent, and I'm sorry if that takes away from your glasses. But somebody said I. Who said that? I don't know. Um, it looks to be. Let's scroll down here. I am Clark Kent. Yes, I know you're Clark Kent. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to pull the con. I, anyway, sorry I brought that up. But <laughs> you're just you're just wanting to hurt me tonight. This is uh, this is the Facebook quote of the week. Nice. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, go out out of bounds here tonight. I'm actually not gonna do a quote of the week, but I'm gonna do a picture of the week. All right. One sec. Well, I'm gonna go. Here is the Facebook picture of the week. You ready? Yep. <laughs> oh, Who's that? It's Mark in a scene from The Departed. That is Mark Podolsky. He's, he's not drinking make as Mark, but he is impersonating our very own Mike Zeno during the Halloween edition of the Mastermind Call. Yeah, he did a great job. He really did. He's getting better at his accent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's years in the making. It'll get there. That's awesome. Um, I love. I loved that. I don't know if I, I don't know if anybody else saw the mastermind call, but uh, Mark Mark was in costume and Eric was in costume, and they were like the only two. Scott Todd was, you know, himself. Everybody else, Carl Webb had his big beard, and that's it. Come on, Carl. You could have done so much with that beard. <laughs> Scott, I got a question here. Okay, what's that? Logan Swanson, how do you negotiate with older folks that bought the property years ago for much more than the current value of the property? I got to tell you myself, I love dealing with older people, right? They are awesome because here's the deal. They will, Logan, sell you that property, but not until you hear their story. They want to tell you why they bought the property, the hopes and dreams they had, the reasons why it didn't work out, and they will sell you that property. The reality is that we work with the current market value, right? And, the, and and it's not always represent or equal to what they purchased it for. So, you know, I think the way you win those people over is with complete honesty and transparency. And I do that all the time. You know, there's no reason to try to make up a reason as why you're buying the property. I tell people outright why, outright why I'm buying it. I tell them the reality is that there's there's the taxable value, there's the assess, assessed value, and then there's market value. And the market value is what we have to work with. So be honest with them. Be upfront with them. And listen to this story, uh, Logan, and you will buy that property. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? Tell them you are, you are in a unique situation. And honestly, we do very careful research getting into this. We analyze the market. We are wholesalers and, you know, we're trying to flip the property uh, for cash or, or sell it on terms. And, and people are, people appreciate honesty. They really do. 
they do. It's not really common in land, uh, not land, but real estate in general. And I think that when we bring that to the equation, it brings a sense of relief. You can hear them almost exhale with a sigh of relief and it just brings believability and you can close deals. So exactly. just, be just be honest. Be honest. What's the quote? Wait, did you do the quote? Oh, the, the quote. Picture, picture of the week. Picture of the week. Oh, that's the Boston Lager. No, it's not. Not? I don't know what it is. It's the refill segment. Oh. Pull him up. I'm pulling him up. Without further Pull ado. Back for us. Without further ado, we'll bring it up. The refill expert. Here he there is. He is. I, I think Laura's going to have to take away Michael's uh, alcoholic beverage here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's just a little have, bit of Clooney, Matt. I have to, I'm going to add to what you guys were talking about to Logan. Um, and I've said this on the show before, right? Uh, let them confess. It's exactly what Mike is saying, but a slightly different spin. Let them confess, right? They're calling you. They're calling you for a reason. If, right. it's, to, if it's to, you know, to, to, uh, to bitch you out, to let them and uh, move on, right? But most of the time, they just want to tell you their story. Let them confess. All the details you need to close them are in the confession. They're in the story. Exactly. Why. exactly. Just let them tell you. It takes a little bit longer, but, you know. You're good to go. So, all right, let's do a refill here. Spe uh, speaking of that, it takes a little bit longer. Logan responded. He said, thanks, guys. That's what I did. And she had me on the phone for an hour. That's it was too a long. Chat. That's why I have two words long. for you. Two words for you, Logan. Intake manager. <laughs> Intake manager. <laughs> Control the conversation. Intake yeah. manager. Intake yeah. manager. Yeah, don't be afraid to have a hard stop, as uh, as they like to as they like to call it. So uh, raise a bottle of scope. Um, <laughs> then you're in boarding school. Have yourself a cocktail. I already reported mine while I was watching you guys fight like cats and dogs. Oh, we never fight. And cheers. If you're, if you're out there doing deals, if you're working hard, if you feel like you're spinning your wheels like me, have a cocktail. Uh, mail and market tomorrow. Cheers. I poured too fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously you don't drink beer very often. From Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What are you drinking tonight, though, Scott? Can we see? Well, I, I switched it up. My first bottle. Where'd it go? <laughs> can, we, can all the people at home just watch Sano every time he talks now? Is like, let me lean into the microphone. I'm having a Thresher Wheat India Pale Ale out of Decorah, Iowa, where I went to college. Well, wait a minute. I wanted to parlay off of the first beer. Yeah, I know. I can't find the bottle. Just tell us the name. It's called the pseudo Sue. I'll drink it again next week. It's but it's got a it's got something that I want to utilize as the parlay. It's got what on it? It's got a T-Rex. Why? Uh it's called pseudo Sue Pale Ale. Who's pseudo Sue? Sue uh refers to the most complete ever uh T-Rex skeleton that's ever been found in uh, the state of South Dakota. I believe it was 1989. The year Matt, I graduated high school. And, what's that? That's the year I graduated high school. That is the year I was a freshman in high school. What year? 89. 80, 89. Oh. No, you know what? Might be 90. Scott. I forgot how old, forgot how old you guys are. Scott. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, what's up? So that, you're talking about fossils. I think we should hear about your son's discovery. Your son is basically famous now. Well, my son is famous, yes. Where yeah, is this? All right. I wish Ben was watching right now. Well, he'll watch the rerun. So, Let's tell the story. Yeah, yeah I'll watch the rerun. Okay, quick story. Uh, this was a year and a half ago already. Actually, two and a half years. I don't know. It was Father's Day uh, of 2017 or 2016. Okay. Think about this. And uh, my sons and I went for a hike. We went for a great hike. There's this beautiful trail uh, 30 minutes away from La Crosse uh, where you uh, hike up a bluff and then you get to the top, you eat lunch in this uh, little shelter overlooking the Mississippi River. It's absolutely beautiful. So we packed lunch, went up there, had a grand old time. And on the way down, um, we were hiking away and my youngest son and I, Sam, uh, we found a frog on the trail. We were looking at the frog. Oh, dad, look, it's a frog. Okay. And behind me was Ben. 
and he was 11 at the time. And he said, dad, look at this. And he, he bent over and he found this uh, kind of jagged rock sticking out of the ground. And it, uh, it was about three and a half, four inches long. And it was a perfectly preserved spear point. Nice. Uh, and uh, we turned it into, we turned it into the ranger's office and uh, turns out the spear point is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. They carbon dated it. The it's oldest the one ever found there? The oldest artifact ever found in the area. Nice. Uh, and it's now called the Ben Bosman Spear Point, and it's on display at the, at the state park. And there was a, there was a scientific article uh, written about it. So think, it's kind of cool. I think after the show's over, you should put a link to it in the comments. I will post the scientific article in the comments. No, it's actually really cool. Like when I saw that and I realized you didn't tell me, I was like mad. I'm like, why didn't you tell me this, Scott? Like, <laughs> I didn't really care. Like I found this out on my own by researching you. Yeah, I try to keep things from you. What was that creepy part at the end there? Researching? <laughs> Researching him. Is everybody, did anybody else on the show hear that? Or is it? Your next, you, Matt Forbes. Was it just me? Or you guys keep going because that was creepy. That Hello, was creepy. creepy yes. Oh, I found it out when I was researching you online. Oh. Hey, man, let's change the subject. <laughs> Nightcap. Packeted. It was spelled wrong though. Who who made those shirts? Aaron? It's night. No, night no, 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 no. With a K. With a K? Yeah, I know. I know. Come on. You uh, like spelling it that way. Perfect. Lucky Aaron is so awesome and we'll forgive her. Mm -hmm. So all right. Matt, we're talking about the reverse of the scarcity mentality, the abundance mentality. And I think Scott, do you have some more detail? Oh, yeah, I got I have one more visual, one more visual aid here I'd like to share. And by the because, way, folks, it's not a Packers hat on Matt's head. No, it's my my moving company. Shout out to Perry Long. What up? It does look like he's going against the Patriots. I I I I broke down at the Patriots game versus the Packers when the goat is just killing them. I broke down. I did something I never do. I bought an NFL hat, and it arrives on Friday. It's the Army nice. hat with the Patriots and the American flag. Will we see this next week on the nightcap? <sighs> yes, you will. Excellent. You. Let's have NFL Hat yeah. Week. I don't have one. Ooh. What's that favorite Hat Week? I like it. It's just cold All in right. my basement. I've had it with that. You've had it with that. All right. Here, here, here's another visual aid for you folks. <laughs> to <All right>. uh, <laughs> to what do we got? To support to support the abundance mindset. Uh, yeah. of land and bu land abundance right so we've we've seen this map before i think scott todd showed it in my first boot camp nobody lives in the green areas <laughs> is that why we invest in land in those areas a Look lot of green on that map arizona new mexico oregon california western texas Wait, what about this state? Anybody work in this state? Put that away. It's a secret. Oh, it is a secret. Sorry. That's for Zeno and Bossman to know and for everyone else to find out. If you watch a nightcap. <laughs> oh, Matt, I can't hear you. When they start buying Canada, eh? <laughs> eh? Take off, eh? You know what they said in the uh, South Park? Blame Canada. <laughs> Blame Canada. Yeah, that was a good episode. So anyway, we hope that uh, these were some good examples for everybody to show you that there is an abundance of land out there. And you know what? The, the other thing that tells the story behind all this is, is time. Time tells the story with this because Mark Podolsky has been doing this for 18 years and he has seen no slow down in his business you're such a goofball his business is only his business has only improved right? right scott todd his business has only taken off yes tate litchfield killing it eric peterson killing it <laughs> look at chris grassman roberto chavez killing it see, there are people killing it i'm throwing away all my mail in the trash and printing alaska ones now 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> Secrets out. That's it. Listen, not, no one lives there, Chris Kraft. This scarcity mentality is nothing more than something that limits you for massive action. Don't let it be another excuse not to yeah. succeed. Just mail. Just an excuse. That's all it is. All it is. Just all right. Let's do one more segment, can we? Let's do it. I all trust right. I trust it's a, the Boston Laga segment. I've really screwed up. Like this donkeys, it's it's not we don't call it donkeys no who said donkeys where'd you get that intel scott where'd that's you get just, that intel that's just wrong matt, matt forbes provided it to me no all well, right no, it's, it's time well, for dunks dunks i lost my boston lega sheet it's time for the boston lega quote of the week segment word whatever you want what word whatever you want to call you it show all the words this is my favorite Favorite Boston Lego word of all That's time. Cheetah. And Matt and I both know we're in New England. You never play cards with a cheetah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly never. right. Cheetah. So tonight, <laughs> tonight for how to speak Boston. Uh, oh, well, you know what? This is kind of an easy one, but I think we should do it because. I hope I get it right. I feel a lot of pressure. No, you'll be fine tonight. You really That's will. That's it. That's the word. Pressure. We did it. It's over. Pressure. Done. Pressure. Beer. Under pressure. Under pressure. Uh, That's so, the same song from Vanilla, from Vanilla Ice. Dun, 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 dun. And this is really, no, this no, is really no, a shout out to Laura. that off she, from Queen. uses this word all the time. What? Uh, instead of saying very awesome, what do you folks say? Oh. Wicked. Wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. Yeah. Well, is there Wicked any other awesome. way to say it? I had never heard Wicked Awesome until I met you two. Have you heard the word Wicked before? <laughs> I've heard the word Wicked. Yes, I have. Not the Wicked Witch of the West, but Wicked. No, no, I've heard Wicked, but I've never heard Wicked Awesome. Scott's like, yes, I enjoy musical theater, and I went to New York City that one time. <laughs> hey, why do you mock me? I don't. I have a degree in musical theater. I've been there twice. I went Laura to said, the Phantom of the Opera me. and Miss Saigon. Did oh, you, you Miss Saigon? Mock me or mock me? All right, Logan's got something to say. Hold on. Putting it in the chat for you, monkeys. There we go. Whoa, Logan Swanson. Logan. Here it is. Shout out. He, he said, uh, four weeks ago, I had my first call with Zeno after fooling around for months with the toolkit. I had not sent a single offer. I have since mailed 400 offers. It feels great. Wait till you start buying properties. I'm going to say one thing, Logan. That's wicked awesome. Yeah. That is wicked awesome. Hey, you know what? We were just talking about this last night, Mike, on our flight school Q&A. We had a Q&A last night for people who have not been through flight school. Mm. And how many times, Mike, have you and I spoken to people who they have been, they have been paralyzed over the process of generating offers for months Paralysis over take, analysis. It will take them months to get out their first mailing. Hey, hey it will take I, them months to generate their first list. And then it, it will take them another month to look at the list to make sure everything's right before they send it out. It happens. Sometimes it happens. people are very analytical. Why is yes. Matt Ford blushing? Because <laughs> secretly that's what happened to me, right? That's, that's, I, it took me forever. I finally got into flight school and I like executed and I was mailing and then I froze. I feel like that Packers hat's a little tight. It's not a Packers. Here's pack the God. Here's the thing. Pack Here's the hat. thing that Logan <laughs> experienced. Here's the thing that Logan experienced and I've experienced it. And Mike, you probably experienced it as well. Is that when you have some mentorship and some leadership in this, you accelerate much more quickly. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> and, Logan, you're awesome. Good work. It's true. Whoa, time. Time on the field. I, hold on. Time. Hold on. I'm gonna, no, Stop. I'm gonna do the toast. No. Time to toast. No, no. Tyler. Erica. Tyler. What is it? And liquor. And liquor says it's a Jets hat. Tyler, um, you don't know me, and I don't know you. But I'm six foot eight, and I don't fight about a lot of things. <laughs> but I weigh 340 pounds. Well, them so, fighting words. I don't know if you're going to boot camp, but I just signed up uh, today. But uh, I am no Jets fan, sir. 
Not happening. He's a Pats fan. I'm a Patriots fan through and through. Hey, boss man. Yes. Bottom line, it's all about massive action, is what you're saying. And I yeah. agree with 100%, 110%. And the advantage. But it's also about team, what I was trying to get at. What sorry. I was trying to get at is it's also about having accountability and leadership and mentorship. What does it bring? Accountability brings, develops the discipline, discipline, creates the habit, and delivers the results. Perfect. Whoa. Yeah, well, Cheers. I, I we made that up, Forbes. Wow, I haven't heard that yet. That's quite good. Actually, it came from someone who's cranking out the business right now. Roberto Chavez. It came yeah. from him. We're going to have him on here. Yeah, you got to interview on, that we'll guy. on again. I got another shout out. From Michael yeah. Crook, Mike Zeno helped me. My first call went well. Thanks. Yeah. I, I will tell you, being that I'm now in coaching, that uh, as an analytical guy, I, I don't know if I could ever get this business off the ground without, you know, having like you guys on standby and having Tate on standby where I can just box him and be like, Tate, blah, 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 and have him hit me back and be like, you're an idiot. Just, just do this. Right? I'm wearing like, the Jets hat. <laughs> It's not a it, Barbara. It's not a Jets hat. It's it was, it's cold in my basement. It's <laughs> well, it snowing in there. I was cold. It's look how cold. look how cold it is back there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but um, you know, for people like us, I don't know if there's other people who are watching this call. I mean, if you're like me and and you get stuck on those things, I mean, I I literally I had a call with Bosman what yesterday. It was like, hey, I did this entire fancy spreadsheet, and, and Scott's like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you talk for about another ten seconds, and then. <laughs> zip it zip it forbes here's what you need to go do and he sadly is zip it. Yeah. and he's exactly let me tell you about a little correct. bit called zip it yep another zip awesome powers uh reference yes. we should play that as the outro that actually could be the legitimate theme music da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. yeah that'd be a good outro. what was that you want to do that again Bosman? what was that no no no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> we should let these people go because Oh, it's 11.15. Yeah. It's getting late. Okay. I can't believe Barbara didn't like my hat. What's so funny, Mike? <laughs> What's so funny, Mike? I can't say. <laughs> Why can't it let me chat with Matt Forbes? It's saying I can't. Oh, nice. Okay, good. No, I'm trying to everybody. Out. I just did it. There you go. We can always chat. I was trying to chat and it was stuck on the Matt Foes one. It wouldn't let me do it. But it was to all of you, basically both of you. Listen, this has been a phenomenal show. It's been a good show. Yeah. It's been fun. Um, if uh, anyone is interested in our Land Geek programs, email uh, Mike or myself. Facebook message us. Mm. I'll put the email in the comments. And we would be happy to talk to you at any time. But in the meantime, are you pulling up the outro there, Mike? I'm pulling it up. You got the Austin Powers music queued up? I don't have that pulled up. Oh. Scott Bossman. Yes, sir. You're awesome. Matt Forbes, I'm glad you changed out that Jets hat. I'll see you at Santapio's right. this week. Yeah, you let me know. Let's go. I would I would go. I'll drive to Boston. Me and an iPad with Bossman. Nice. Everything oh, with the iPad thanks, sounds guys. great. We'll be pouring the, the cheap wine on the on the iPad. There you go, boss. <laughs> nice, nice. I like it. That's All right. Wicked, wicked cool. Wicked Cheers. awesome. Cheers. Thanks, fellas. Good night. Boss man. Boss man. You complete me. You complete me. Yeah.